Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh There were three women who belong to Rasulullah who are depicted as the role model of women leadership in Islam These two women were the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and another one was his daughter Siti Hadijah was the first wife and she was very successful merchant more than that she was the first believer of Islam she fed and clothed the poor assisted her relatives financially and provided marriage portions to poor relations She was also well known as Hadijah al Kubro. The second one is Aisha binti Abu Bakar. Aisha is portrayed as scholarly and inquisitive. She was known for narrating thousands of hadith, and not just on matters related to Muhammad's private life, but also on topics such as inheritance. pilgrimage and eschatology. Her intellect and knowledge in various subjects, including poetry and medicine. Aisha participated in the Battle of Kamel by giving speeches and leading troops on the back of her camel. Although she lost the battle, but her involvement left as impressive and determinant. Muslims regard Aisha as the woman of intelligence. The third one is Fatima Az-Zahra. Fatima was the daughter of Rasulullah and she is well known for a loving and devoted daughter, mother, wife, and a sincere Muslim as an exemplar for women. It is believed that she was very close to her father and her distinction from other women was mentioned in many hadith. After Hadija, Muslim regards Fatima as the most significant historical figure considered to be the leader of all women in this world and in paradise. It is because of her moral purity that she occupies an analogous position in Islam. She also attended Battle of Uhud. Fatima attended to the wounds as a nurse of her father and husband and regularly visited the graves of all those who died in the battle and prayed for them. From this three role modeling, we could reflect it how Islam regards women as noble. Those are women with the characteristics that have balanced sides of masculinity and domesticity. In terms of masculinity sides, the three noble women in Islam were well known for their independence, intelligence, and determinants. The three characters were at Rasulullah's era, rewarded more for men rather than the women. Some women were not allowed to be literate, while Aisha were able to create portion of not only reading hadith, but also narrating them. Being a businesswoman at that time, to some extent was seen to be a luck over inheritance of fathers. However, Hadija resembled the business not only as just a running business but an expanding business from Mecca to Syria. Participating in battles was also excluded for women, yet Aisha managed the troops, led the battle, and Fatima acted as nurse as well as prayed for those who died in the battle. These characteristics are no longer categorized as masculinity for today's, of course, 
Yet at the time, it was very outrageous. Through this three noble women story, we acknowledge that women indeed can do beyond. Islam itself regards and additionally encourages women to pursue their own careers if they so choose as long as the women's integrity is safeguarded and she fulfilled her primary obligations towards her husband and children. Islam also dignifies a woman by arranging for her to be maintained always and financially supported by their closest male guardian like father, brother, and husband. This value somehow created other characters that define women as noble other than the masculinity characters as we mentioned before. Those are kindness, daring, loving, and devoting to their men in this case is their father and their husband. As the history said, Hadijah tends to help people who need help and Aisha managed to educate other women to be literate and Fatima did household works at home but also doing nursing at war. Dear Muslima, being as perfect as the role models above might not be easy. However, Having at least one of their characters shall also make ourselves to be loved and guided by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.